the year, and he had some time off the field last year too. But if he can rally the troops uh, without a single snap played, uh, he's not the linebacker he was five years ago. But if he can still have the same impact from an off the field in, uh, you know standpoint that he had um, in his Super Bowl run with the Ravens in 2000, I think the Ravens still be very good. And uh, Daniel, I really like your point. Ray Lewis is one of the best. It's not the best ever. Mm-hmm. He's definitely in my top ten middle linebackers of the, of all time, and I'm you know I'm on the ESPN page right now, and you know I'm looking at um one of the videos that they're sort of endorsing on this page is top middle linebackers since 1996. They're talking about obviously this came up because of the Ray Lewis loss and because his career could potentially be over. So I've got to ask you, do you think that this guy is a top ten linebacker not only since '96 but of all time? Uh, no question, he is at least in the top five because of just the kind of take away the impact he made on the field. Off the field, he was the most inspirational two mm-hmm. or three guys in all of sports ever. Definitely. Because this guy was just, yeah, off the field was perhaps the nicest you know, football player you could ever meet, a uh, tremendous off the field impact, and then on the field, uh, just a monster. And, mm-hmm. and the stats don't lie because he is the only linebacker in NFL history with 30 sacks and big interceptions. And he was perhaps the main reason why the Ravens were so dominant defensively um, th- throughout this entire decade. And the only reason. I believe why the Ravens were even close last year was because of Ray Lewis's intensity, his fire, and the fact that, you know, the Baltimore Ravens rallied around this player, and uh, why not when you're one of the best of all time? And just to go real quick into this other topic, will Ray Lewis play next year? That's obviously a question up for me, and it's tell. But just with all the fire and the passion he has, if the next season rolls along, I believe Lewis will be right in the discussion. He'll probably set up for another Ravens season next year. I wouldn't be shocked if he plays in 2013. Yeah, I can't agree with you more. This guy loves the game too much to end his career on that note, and I think he's going to come back firing next year. Yeah, remember that Ray Lewis... Real quick, he wanted, since that win in the Super Bowl 12 years ago, he wants another ring. And when, when the Ravens hit the hole, Lewis does not want to end on a low note, losing the AFC Championship game, and then uh, coming short on a good season so far for the Ravens, we back next year. I, I would be very surprised if he called the foot. Yeah, I totally agree. Um we got to speed things up a little bit, uh, so I'm gonna bring. The, I'm gonna go to our number four team, and I am so glad I have you on this show now because you are not gonna like what you're about to hear. <laughs> My number four team is the Chicago Bears. Uh, we got a homer on this show. Oh my goodness, Cleanie. Let me hear your explanation here. Um. Well, look at the stats. Look at the records. Lance Briggs, Peanut Tillman. First duo to have back-to-back pick sixes. Their defense has scored just as much as their offense. They are the most explosive team in the NFL right now. The Chicago Bears, number four. They're not even in discussion for the top uh, two or three teams in the NFC. Now, they're flying under the radar right now because they're just winning solid football. And outside of that one color debacle, this team has just silently won and won off it. Now, I do believe that they're a top ten team in the NFL. But let's just go, first of all, to the offensive side. I'm a big fan of color to Marshall. Putting in that big play receiver is going to help this team. And they have perhaps one of the best running backs in the NFC, it's not the NFL with Matt Forte. If the Bears can get things going offensively, their defense will be good. But I have too many years for many years for Chicago. And I just believe that Jay Culler is not a top, is not leading his team to number four as far as talent goes because uh, this. This quarterback has his issues, his off-the-field problems, and another thing is uh, he hasn't been able to cut down the interceptions over the years. I think the pressure, the Bears will not make the play that count, and defensively, this isn't the same 
team is all sick, uh, but certainly they're still a good defense. Yeah, um, so Nick Rice, I have to ask you, I'm not saying that Jay Cutler is why the Bears are at this spot. I'm saying that it's the combination of that defense intercepting the ball and taking it back and that offense just doing what it has to do to get the win. I'm not, you're right, the Bears are flying under the radar right now. But I don't understand. I mean, I think that they're easily a top five. Maybe I was a little, I mean, obviously I'm a huge Chicago Bears fan. Maybe I was a little bit aggressive putting them at number four, but I definitely think that they're at least number five. And honestly, I still am on my side with the, um, the fact that they are just a little bit high on your rankings. And honestly, I, I, I mean, with, with Chicago, offense has been the issue. And uh, the other thing is, I mean, I mean, they're flying under the radar, but again, I just don't believe in that offensive line. Not only, it's not only Dick Culler that has led to so many mistakes, because this offensive line has allowed to be sacked over the years. And this their offensive line is getting somewhat old. They need to kind of revamp that entire offense, I believe. If they have a shot to winning the Super Bowl, I don't be surprised. If not for everything I've said, the fact that they are just in the NFC uh, certainly poses a problem because um, I don't believe they're in the same class yet going into the season. Same issue, not the same class as the Packers in their division. And you also have teams like the Falcons, you know, maybe a team flying under the radar right now, but the Niners uh, and certainly uh, some other teams in the NFC that can fight to be one of the top teams in that conference. I still believe the Bears are not yet a top ten uh, or top three team in the NFC. I still think the Packers, Falcons, and Niners are better than them. They should be a little lower in the top ten, but I think this homer has them just a little bit higher. And the record certainly is better than almost all the NFC. Yeah, and I mean, great points there. I, you know, I, you may think I have them a little high, but I think I have them just right because I, I mean. My top three teams, they're definitely not better than those, but they are definitely, I think that they could, if they keep going on this hot streak, they could become a contender. They're under the radar right now, but once they keep on piling on the games, and they've got an easy stretch of games coming up, the next game, the next game is a little bit tricky. It's the, Li- it's the Lions at home. That's a little bit tricky, but um, after that, you've got Tennessee and... You've got Minnesota. You've got all these teams that I think that are easy wins for the Bears. And once they start stringing a few wins together, people are going to start noticing them. So Nick, I'm going to put you on. I'm going. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and uh, we'll be back in about a minute. All right. All right. Yeah. Sure, man. Anytime. Okay. Thanks. I'm doing my show. And we are back here on in the pocket. Our good friend Nick Rice had to go, but um, the show will be going on. I'd like to thank Nick for his wonderful commentary and insight and um, his wonderful arguments against my number four team, the Chicago Bears. Um, and we're going to have to speed up the show a little bit. So we've got the number three Houston Texans, 5-1, and one, lost to the Packers. I still have them ranked higher um, simply because they're 5-1. and one. And here's the thing with Houston. They are the most talented team. They have great they have a great player on every side of the ball at just about every position. You've got obviously I think Matt Schaub, I think he's a very underrated quarterback. I think that I think Matt Schaub has a lot of talent and a lot of potential. Or not potential. I just think he has a ton of talent. I just think Matt Schaub is a great guy, is a great uh, football player. And, um, and then at receiving, you've got Arian Foster, quite possibly the best back in the league. Then receiving, Andre Johnson. He's been a little quiet this year. So, I mean, Texas, Houston's passing game has been a little bit quiet this year. But nonetheless, they, um, they are an elite uh, team. And then on the defensive side of the ball, Yes, J.J. Watt, this guy, where did he come from? He has come out of nowhere onto the NFL scene. Nine and a half sacks on the year. How do you do that? How do you do that? How do you do that? I just, 
nine and a half sacks is just a baffling number. A baffling number. I, it's unbelievable what this guy does on the football field. He is a monster. A monster. So that is Houston at number three. Now we have New York, the New York Giants at number two because of that dominant win that they had over San Francisco, 26-3. They're 4-2. and two. They got an easy game against Washington at home next week. I think that um, the defending champions are looking better than ever right now. I don't know that they'll stay on this top ten, or on this, uh, in this top five. I think they're always going to be around the top ten. I think you're, they're always going to be a team that you're talking about. But, and I definitely, you know, and, but will they stay? Um, will they stay here? They've got a tough, tough schedule. They've got, after Washington, which I think is a win, they've got Dallas, then Pittsburgh, and then they've got Cincinnati, which I think will be a win. But then, let's say, there's some of the hardest teams. They've got Green Bay. New Orleans, Atlanta, Baltimore, and Philadelphia. That's how they close out their season with a game against Washington in the middle there. So I think that there is just no way that New York could stay in this top ten, but as of right now, they are the second best team in the NFL today. Now we're going to take one more break before we get to our number one team in the NFL. I bet you can guess who it is. It's <laughs> It was a pretty easy decision, but... We're going to build the suspense a little bit. This is In the Pocket with Daniel Levy. We'll be right back. Welcome back to In the Pocket. I am Daniel Levy. This is In the Pocket, and we've been doing our top 10 NFL teams. So let's just review At Number 10, you've got the Vikings. At number 9, the Patriots. 8, Seattle. 7, Green Bay. 6, San Francisco. 5, Baltimore. 4, Chicago. Uh, three, Houston, two, New York, and the number one team in the NFL this year. The best of them all, yes, the undefeated Atlanta Falcons. They have been, over, over the past few years, they have been one of the most, they've been really under the radar, but they have always, 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 always been a very, very good team. They've always been so good and I'm sorry we're having a few technical difficulties we're gonna take a short break just so that we can clear those out and then we're gonna continue our talk about Atlanta and then get to the bracketology sorry about that this is in the pocket we'll be right back please please stay with us welcome back to in the pocket I'm Daniel Levy thank you so much for bearing with us throughout those technical difficulties we got it all cleared up shouldn't be any more problems um we were just talking about Lost my train of thought. We were just talking about the six and zero Atlanta Falcons, best team in the NFL. Over the past few years, they have not been one of the teams that has really emerged. Like they've always been a great team. I've always had faith in them ever since they got Matt Ryan. I remember watching them in that wild card game. I remember thinking about how good this team is going to be. But they've always sort of been under the radar to a lot of people, and I, I, you know, I, it's time. And now they're coming up and they're being. They're playing. Then they're playing the way that they that their record reflects. They are playing like the best team in the NFL. They are playing like an elite team, like a Super Bowl team, like the team that's going to win the Super Bowl. Okay, the one thing I'm worried about, and I don't. I think Atlanta is such a humble team. I don't think that this is ever going to become a factor. But could this could this undefeated streak could it become a curse? You you've only had we've only had two I, be, I believe two perfect seasons in NFL history. I don't believe that Atlanta is going to make it three, but could Atlanta be getting too cocky? I don't think that they will. I don't think that they are. I'm just saying it could happen. They've got um they've got a tough road game against Philadelphia next week. I think that they can win that game. But maybe if Philadelphia gets a little bit aggressive on them, it'll put them right back in their place. Cause I mean, and I don't. I like I said, I don't think that this is going to be a factor at all. I think that this is going to be a. Um, I think that the um, the Falcons are going to. I think that they're going to be a definite contender for the Super Bowl, probably the AFC champion, and that's going to conclude our power rankings. Now we are going to get to. Bracketology. 
So let's break this down.